And welcome back to Jeff Kreenange live on the road. We are at the residence of the U.S. Ambassador. What a beautiful setting for a show that's very important for this nation moving forward. Yes, and U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Kyle McCarter, could be considered a newly arrived ambassador, but he's been here close to a year. But he's been traveling around seeing for himself what this country is all about. First came here, believe it or not, 32 years ago, 1987, in Taraka Nithi. Good Lord, who does that? <laughs> Pelosi. So, yeah. Kenya's role in the region. Everybody keeps saying we are, we are the, the linchpin. This is the hub of the region. And yet, from, uh, according to critics, we're not performing to par. You know, we're not, we're not holding our own just yet. What, what is it? And what should we do? What needs to be done? Well, I, I, you're right. I think we're, we're not doing everything we could and should. Um, but, uh, you know, we've seen throughout history some changes. We've seen, you know, it, it just it, things don't happen quickly overnight. But I think we are um, staged in the right place right today to see uh, some big things happen. And, and like I said, with, uh, you know, with other leaders from East Africa saying, listen, we're waiting for you. We're waiting for you yeah. to show us how, how to do this. I mean, the expression is when, uh, when you know, Kenya sneezes, the rest of East Africa gets a cold, right? right? Yes. I mean, yes. and it's true, good or bad. Yeah. And I think it's time for us to show uh, with leadership how, um, like countries that we've seen transformed, like Singapore. Yeah. Singapore was nothing. Look at it today. You say, how does that happen? What well, happens over a little time but with a lot of people stepping up and having a vision for what their country can be. And that's why we go back to BBI. I think there was a, a, a bit of a vision put out there for what Kenya can be if the people just will remember what they have to be proud of. And uh, even that, the one suggestion going to 26, uh, the Boxing Day to be, yeah. go to Ken, a cultural day, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, great idea. A great idea to stop and focus and remember what your country can be and should be and commit yourself to it. And um, uh, interesting thing, uh, you know, just, just, um, just right after that, I, I, I delivered turkeys to the, uh, for Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. And uh, I, I actually delivered r roasted turkeys, but one time I delivered an Ugali turkey as well. Uh, because I thought that maybe, you know, we have our Thanksgiving with roasted turkey as the tradition even Kenya on the 26th could have their Ugali turkey, but uh, because you don't want to offend the national food. <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah. But uh, yeah. no, I think I think part of that is part of this is tradition. The tradition needs to become. Listen, we are going to lead uh, because we've been blessed by God as a country uh, with so many good resources, and and now we have to be good stewards of the resources we have. Yeah. And so I, th I think it can happen. Do you get disappointed sometimes that uh, we, we, we actually move one step forward and two steps backwards? Uh, the, question, the question is whether you learn the lesson, yeah. right? I mean, it's, you're failing. The, 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 there's, a, there's a book called Failing Forward. Uh, so failure is not the issue. It's, it's, it's what you learn from it, what you take from it, whether you decide that you're not going to do it again. And, uh, and I think uh, we do. We all learn from the lessons. Yeah. You look, there's, you talk about BBI. There's a line there borrowed from JFK's inaugural speech in 1961. You don't remember the line, ask not what your country can do for you. It's in the BBI. It's in the report. Yeah. Country before self. Country before self. And, and I think that's, that's what was talked about. And I think that was what gave that good feeling, that good... Um, uh, sense of pride in your country. I mean, I, I was proud of Kenya that day when they, when they presented BBI. I, and I'm not saying I agreed with everything in BBI, yeah. but I was I was so proud of the people of Kenya because they took that step to say, listen, this is who we are, this is who we can be, and and we need to do what's in the best interest of our country and not just ourselves. And I think there was a lot of quiet politicians that day. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. that's not their mo. That's not the way they operate. I'm sure you were watching the body language. Oh, I was. I was quite entertained by the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but Lizzie, let's switch gears and talk about Kenya's relationship with Washington. Mm -hmm. How would you describe it? Um, it's 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 the best it's ever been. Actually, I mean, we have a we have this new new strategic partnership. This this uh, which is based upon a, a, a friendship and an agreement between President Trump and President Kenyatta. 
Uh, it is, it's kind of launched us into some new level of discussions, talking about free trade, uh, talking about how we can go beyond AGOA. Uh, you know, AGOA is great. We haven't really taken advantage of it as much as we should, but we need to go beyond that, do something bigger, do something uh, that's even better and, and, and more of this friendship relation. That's why, that's why every time I talk about it, every time I hashtag, it's USA Maraviki. It's, this is what it's about. It's about doing the things that a friend would do for you know, one another. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's not based on necessarily, hey, this is our policy says we have to do this. No, our policy is based on what we're gonna do as friends. And so uh, uh, I, I think the relationship is the best, it's the best it's ever been. And it's my job to continue that and make sure that just keeps going strong. Let me ask you something. Maybe it's just my observation. Why is it when there's a Republican administration in place in Washington, the relationship with Africa is a lot warmer than the Democrats? Is it, is it just me or, or at least the, the trade and the aid is more? Remember PEPFAR during George W. Bush? How much, 15 billion, whatever it was. I mean, a, a lot of aid. About 750 million Kenyan shillings was invested. And, 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 and you have some distractor that says, oh, that was self-serving. There was nothing self-serving about that. That was a, a compassionate act by an administration that said, listen, if we don't address this wasting disease issue, which is what it used to be called, right? Because we didn't know. Correct. Uh, if we don't address this issue, generations are gonna be lost. And, and so there, that was, a, that was a, a sacrificial act by the administration that simply cared for the people. And I think, that here again, you gotta, you, your, poli your policy shouldn't direct uh, who you care for and how you care for them, but you should care for them and those policies should back you up when you do that. And I think that's what we see in the current administration. Yeah. Uh, we, we, see a, we see a daily push for going down the pathway to self-reliance. There's not a day in the embassy that I don't sign some document that doesn't refer to be committed to the pathway of self-reliance for Kenya. And, and you know what that means? That means that you care for the people. That you're not, we're not just going to tell people what to do. We're going to get people to the, to the point that they can do everything on their own. Yeah. And I think this is reflective of everything that we do, whether it's in the private sector with NGOs or when we do infrastructure projects. I mean, this has come up often. On this, uh, you know, the highway from Mon Nairobi to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the way we're not going to go, we're not going to do this without doing it on our terms, and that is, we're going to do it at the lowest price. We're going to do it at the highest quality. We're going to do it uh, with in, instead of just being 30 centimeters thick, we're going to 90 centimeters thick. We're going to make it for the long term. It's going it's going to last, and we're going to do it with Kenyans. We're going to do we're going to train Kenyans every kilometer. We're going to have apprenticeships that that show Kenyans that. Road number two is their road. Not just with it, they'll do it on their own. And so, uh, and we're not gonna do it by imposing debt that is, that is, that is harmful to the country. And, um, and, and we're gonna show the best way to do these projects. Are you saying there's some others that aren't done as well? It's gonna be a great contrast. <laughs> so you're saying, Belosi, that that contract is still on, the expressway from Nairobi to Mombasa will be it built? Is. It is, yeah. No doubt, no and, doubts. And no corruption. I, 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 and, 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 and you know what? <laughs> My fault for leaving that off. We have to act according you know, to the law. The Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Those American contractors, if they make a mistake, don't worry about them going to the judicial system that you may not have assurance you know, is going to deliver justice. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of them at home. <laughs> they, they're accountable to us. They can work here, but they're accountable to us in the United States. And so, how, how, do you, how do you do it in an affordable way? Well, you eliminate the corruption. You eliminate having to pay off. You eliminate all those extra fees, as, 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 you know, as, as are referred to. Uh, and that's how you become competitive. And so, that standard, we want to show that standard, that ethical... In fact, we go back to BBI. Ethos. Ethos. Right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it comes down to not really what you do, but what's, what's in your, what's, what, what are your convictions? Are you going to do this right? Or are you going to succumb to the corruption? We're not going to, and we're not going to allow them to. And so I think that's what's going to set us apart with a signature project. The one that's needed. Have you ever driven? I mean, oh, goodness. I, I mean you drive down that road yeah. and, you, and you're going down to Mombasa and you think, my God, I need a vacation by the time I get down there just because I went through all the, you know, emotional you know, yeah, trauma yeah. Uh, of getting there, especially yeah. if, if, you, if you're running in the dark 
and uh, you know you've got these lorries coming at you head on. The FTA, the Free Trade Agreement. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, tell, tell us about that. Well, it's it's something that it take it, it can't happen overnight. Uh, there's a lot of qualifications for it, but the, the great news is Kenya is first in line. Kenya is first, and, and this will be the first ever in, in Africa. And uh, this is, it's got tremendous potential. And I believe the, um, the current administration, both current administrations are, are committed to this. Uh, and we're taking steps to move it in that direction. And uh, it, it's going to be a good thing for the prosperity of both of our countries. Uh, it's going to be a huge win-win. You know, when that plane started flying directly from JKI to JFK, a lot of people, there were a lot of critics saying it'll never fly, pardon the pun. Yeah. It's one of the busiest routes. It is. I think they're like 85% full. Yep, yep. Not and bad. Not bad. For something that'll never fly. <laughs> and the cargo now. Everyone keeps saying cargo is the one that'll be king. Right, and we've just and, and we've just now made some some new steps, some some new uh, uh, hit some new uh, approvals to where we can even do more. Yeah, you excited about that? Oh, I am. Will this be a step up from AGOA, the Africa Growth and Opportunities Act? It, it'll be better than AGOA. It'll be it, we want to go beyond AGOA. Uh, we'll go, AGOA offers all kinds of opportunity, but we want to go way beyond that for both of our countries. And this will be uh, this will be unique to Africa. It'll be, uh, it'll be something that I think uh, by the time it comes about, everyone, is, everyone in leadership is going to be excited to say, I was, I was there at that time when it happened. Yeah, yeah. Bottom line, when, when, what are we looking at? Next 12 to 18 months, uh, sooner? I think, I think it's probably about a two-year two -year process. Okay. I mean, okay. by the, uh, AGOA is not going to be extended. No. But as AGOA is phased out, um, uh, this will take place. And why Kenya first, if I may ask? Because you said Kenya. Because they qualify. Well, listen, we're at the gateway. We're at the gateway to East Africa. I mean, this 85% uh, of the goods coming to East Africa have got to come through us. Yeah. Here again, here's our opportunity to step up and lead. And, and the rest of East Africa is, Africa is really rooting for us on this, in this case as well. They're saying, do this, do this, because if we do this, it's going to open up opportunity for all the countries around us. I notice you always say us when you're referring to us, like you're one of us. <laughs> I've never had another US ambassador say it like that. You feel like you're part of this, don't you? I do, I do. I mean, listen, I, my, my loyalties are to my country, the United States of America, always first. Um, but I have a great love for this country. And, and I believe that my position is to elevate this relationship between our countries. To, to make it the best it's ever been, to make it the 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 um, the perfect friendship and and demonstration of how people work together that care for each other. Look, career diplomats have made it their life to circumnavigate the planet, uh, circumnavigate the planet, and you know from country to country. This is your first posting. It is. And you look like you're having a lot of fun. I am. <laughs> I am having fun. And you might as well. You know, work. Having a job is good. Having, having work is good, but showing, being able to show up to work and enjoy what you're doing is even better. Yeah. yeah. I want to talk more about that. And also that um, each one feed one. Yeah. That's a project you all started, you and your wife started back in the day, right? That's right. I want to talk about that because not many, not many people may know, but it's, it's, I guess that's what grounds you in, in a way, right? Keeps you grounded. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell people I have, I have a lot to lose and I have a lot to gain in my position. And because if... Uh, if, if Kenya can succeed to the level that I have I've put it out there, that they can, they can be this leader of prosperity, for, uh, that's good for the same kids that Victoria takes care of right now. Those same children that she takes care of uh, are going to benefit from this environment. They're going to have greater opportunity to be the next leader, the next generation of leaders in this country. That uh, that she, you know, I, I'm I'm distance from it now, but she she's raising them up to be the next leaders. Yeah. And uh, so it's important that we succeed. It's important we succeed. Good one, Belosi. Going to take a break. Come back. Plenty more ahead. We're speaking live on the road. Jeff Kananga live here at the U.S. Ambassador's residence. Ambassador Kyle McCarter. He keeps talking about we and us. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> Keep tweeting at Koinanga Jeff. At Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.